Hello everybody and welcome to episode 3 of Remaking Cave Story in C++. Uh, for this episode we're going to be uh, creating the game class and input. Uh, my name is Limeotes, my website is limeotes.com, uh, my Twitter is at Limeotes, and this is my GitHub link. So all the source code will be there. Okay, so the game class and input. Um, the problem we're going to be solving, or the problems I should say, we need a more central location for the game loop logic. Uh, right now we have an init main here, and that's not a very good place for it. It should be in its own class, uh, sorry, a game class. So that's where we're going to put that. Um, we need events. Uh, right now, if we run the program, which I'll show you right, I'll show you. The window shows up, but it freezes. Nothing's happening. You see my spinny wheel there. Uh, not good. So we need it to be waiting for events like key presses and all sorts of stuff. Closing the window so we'll be implementing that uh, let me close out of this now because it's stuck we're gonna limit the FPS so when I say limit the FPS I mean we're gonna make sure that the number of um, times the game updates per second doesn't exceed a certain amount uh, cave story runs at 50 frames per second so we're gonna be limiting it to that um, I'll be explaining what's so important, why the frames per second is so important, uh, either later this episode or in a future one. And then we're going to implement the rest of the game class. So that's the problem. So any details we have for this um, episode, just that cave story runs at 50 frames per second, which I just said. So that's going to be important to know. So how are we going to do all of this? What's our solution? We are going to create the game class and implement it. Then we're going to create the input class and implement it. Uh, then we're going to add the input to our game loop, which it, the game loop is going to be in the game class, and then we're going to uh, use the input class in there. And then we're going to finish the episode by just limiting the FPS. So there's a lot of coding ahead of us. So let's get started um, I'm gonna start by creating a new header file called game.h so this is where uh, we're gonna make our game class so I'm gonna start by putting the header guards at the top the usual if not defined game h define Game H. Ended. All right. So class game. It's just a game class. Uh, we're gonna have our constructor. We're gonna have our destructor. Uh, the we want these to be public. So since I'm using a class, those would have been private if I didn't put public there. So gotta make sure we put public. Uh, we're going to have a few private methods. No private variables for right now. Those will come later, but for now we're going to have a few private methods. These are methods that are only going to be used and called from inside the class itself. So they don't need to be public. That would just complicate things. So void game loop. That's going to be the function that has our game loop. Uh, we're going to have a drawing function called draw. We're going to pass in a reference to our graphics class. And then void update. And we're going to pass in this thing called the lapse time. I'll go over what that is in a bit when we uh, start playing with the frames per second. So don't worry about that right now. Make sure you put it in there. I'll explain that. Uh, one last thing. We need to forward declare graphics. Again, it's a reference to it, so we can forward declare it without getting any errors. You could technically include it, but that will cause problems somewhere down the line if you keep including too many things. Probably. 
So that's our game loop. That's uh, not our game loop, our game class. Um, that's it. So now we're just going to implement some of these functions. We're not going to implement all of them just yet, uh, but we'll get most of them. So game.cpp, I'm going to add to the source file uh, folder. So we're going to start by including a couple of things. Uh, I'm going to include SDL. We're going to be using a lot of SDL functions in this class, so we need to include that. We're going to include game.h, which we just created. And we're also going to include graphics.h. Okay? So now, um, before I make the constructor, I'm just going to put a, my comment like I usually do. Um, just to say what we're doing here, what class this is. So our game class and this class holds all the information for our game loop. All information for our game loop. Um, I'm actually going to put our main game loop. There might be other uh, loops that are running, like menu loops and stuff. So it's important to note that this is our main game loop. This is the one where all, pretty much everything's happening. For most of the time, the game is running. So now I'm gonna implement our constructor game. Um, I'll actually write out all of our functions first, just so we don't forget any, and because I'm gonna be calling some from within other ones, so I want them all written out so I don't get any errors. Uh, game loop. And our draw and our update. This one takes graphics. And this one takes a float elapsed time. Good. Alright, so in our constructor, I'm going to call an SDL function called SDL init. And what SDL init does is it sets up all sorts of SDL things. Um, we can check that out on the SDL documentation, just so I can give you a solid description. Um, yeah. So SDL in it. Um, Most things are initialized by default, but this just sets up some stuff, some stuff lets you give it some um, arguments. What, what stuff do you want to set up? Uh, there's the timer, audio, video, joystick, controllers, events. This one's important. Um, there's some important things in there. So what I'm going to like to do and what I'm going to do is... SDL init everything. That's one of the flags, and that just initializes all of the things I just mentioned. So, yeah. Oh, wow, it says, that's pretty cool. It says the same thing as it does on the website. Good. So, that's that. And then we're going to call our game loop like that from our constructor. So what does this mean? This means I go back into main and change some stuff. I get rid of all of this. Instead of including graphics, now I can include game.h. And then all I need to do is create a new instance of game. So what this does is the moment the uh, program starts in int main, it's going to create a game object. The constructor will get called for game. And here. It'll initialize SDL and it'll start the game loop right away. We don't have to call any other functions. We don't have to call game loop from main or anything. It's going to start in the constructor. So I'm going to hold off on implementing the destructor for now because there's nothing to really clean up. So we don't need to do anything there yet. So the game loop. This is a very important function, one of the most important functions in the entire program. This will be happening every frame. And 
yeah it's very important so let's get started we're gonna create our graphics object in here before the loop starts there's still no loop it's still just a function so we're gonna create our graphics object and then we're going to create an SDL event object this SDL event object is gonna hold whatever event happened during that frame so the question then becomes how does how does it find out what event happened and the answer is every time around the loop we're about to create it's going SDL is gonna check uh, for all sorts of different events and if one of them happens it's gonna store it in that event um, variable so to the loop is gonna look like this it's gonna be a while true just like the one that we had in it main before and then we're going to call if SDL pull event, and we're going to pass it that event object so that it, uh, every time around the, uh, the loop, this will pull for pending events. SDL is going to find out what events happened and it's going to stick them in uh, this SDL event. We pass it a reference so it'll update that variable. So now we can just check the SDL event object, our event variable to find out what event happened. So we can say if event.type equals SDL quit return. So SDL quit happens I believe uh, whenever I think it happens when the program ends but it also happens when you click the X to close the program. So This is actually all we need for right now. So if I run this program, what's going to happen is the game loop will start. It'll continue around this while true loop forever, but it'll be pulling events. So the window should no longer freeze. We should be able to move the window around. All right, so here it is. It's running. We can move the window around, click on it. Nothing's going to happen, but it's not freezing because it's not stuck in this loop. It is technically stuck in the loop because there's no way to end it, but this SDL quit event is possible. So this is responsive. I can X out of it and it closes nicely. No crashing, no uh, frozen program. So this is good. So now we want to be able to, what was the next thing in our note? So we created the game class and implemented most of it. So now we're going to create the input class and implement it. Now this input class is going to handle all of our keyboard input. Eventually, um, I don't think there's any mouse input in Cave Story anywhere. If there was, it would go and be handled in here as well. But I don't think we're going to have to worry about that. So in our headers folder, I'm going to create input.h. Now, header guards, class, input, public, private. So we're going to have three private variables. We're going to have, there are going to be STD maps, standard maps from uh, the STL library map. So we have to include that. So include Matt. So now we can use Matt. Um, we're going to have SDL scan code and bool. It's going to be called held keys. It's going to hold, it's, uh, this map is going to hold what keys are currently being held. Um, we need to include SDL.h. We're using SDL scan code. If you don't know what a map does, it's basically a way of holding two two types of related information together. So an SDL scan code is uh, the old SDL SDL 1.2 used to use SDL key codes, um, and that was basically Key code A would be the 
A button on a keyboard. Scan code A is similar, but as you can see from the description, it's not uh, not all keyboards necessarily have their keys in the same spot, so it's going to go to wherever the A key is on the keyboard. That's my understanding of it. I could be wrong. Please correct me if I am wrong, but I believe it. Uh, since not all keyboards have their keys in the same place, oh, I'm sorry, it's not going to go to wherever the A uh, key is. It's going to go to wherever that spot on the keyboard is and whatever key that happens to be on your keyboard. Either way, this is definitely the best way to do it now. It's better to use scan code than key code. So that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to create two more uh, standard maps. One for pressed keys and one for released keys. Uh, and the reason for a bool is we'll be able to pass in any key from your keyboard and it'll know, this map will know whether or not it was held, pressed, or released. So that's helpful. So we're going to have a couple functions here. We're going to have a begin new frame function, uh, which is going to get called when at the beginning of every frame. We're going to have two more functions a key up event function and a key down event function, which will get called when a key is pressed or a key was released. Now we're going to have a was key pressed function uh, so that we can pass in any key to this function and it'll tell us whether or not it was pressed. Same thing for was key release. And the same thing for is the key currently being held. We can find that out too. So all helpful functions. This is our input class. We're going to implement all of this right now. Uh, it's basically just keeping the state of the keyboard. Very helpful. Uh, and we're going to use that for all of our input. So let's go ahead and create in our source folder input.cpp. So obviously include input.h. And that's all we need. Everything else is already included in the header file, unfortunately, but we had to. Um, our comment, this is the input class, uh, keeps track of keyboard state. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, all right, so let's just implement these one by one going down the list. So the first one, begin new frame. At the beginning of every frame, what we want to do is, um, I'll just write a comment. Uh, this function gets called at the beginning of each new frame to reset the keys that are no longer relevant. So we're going to reset pressed keys and released keys because those are only all those only matter for the frame that we're in. Um, so we don't want any of those to be set on the next frame so it can start fresh. If a key is being held, that's already stored in held key, so that's okay. We don't need to worry about uh, pressed keys and released keys. What it was last frame, it doesn't matter. So we just reset those, and that's what's going to happen at the beginning of each frame. Um, the next one, key down event. This takes a const sdl event event. Um, for this one, since we pressed a key, we want to set that key and pressed key is equal to true. So event dot key dot key sim dot scan code. Since we're using scan codes now, we want to use dot scan dot scan code for this. And since it's expect since pressed keys is of type SDL scan code and keysim.scan code is an SDL scan code, we can just index the map like this. 
and set the bool to true. And then since we pressed it, we're also technically holding it, so we have to do that to held keys as well. Same thing. And that's what's going to happen every time we press a key. So now for key, uh, uh, let me put a comment. Um, this gets called when a key has been pressed. Uh, so now we're going to do the same thing for a released key. So this gets called when a key is released. Okay. So we're going to put released keys. at that scan code is true. And then uh, we're going to say held keys at that scan code is false because it was already set true by key down event whenever that happened. So now we have to set it to false because we're no longer holding it since we let go of it. So now our last three functions are just checking functions, checking the state of uh, keys. So bool was key pressed SDL scan code key. Uh, this check if a certain key was pressed during the current frame. So for that check if a key was pressed, all we have to do is check pressed keys at that key, and that'll return a bool, a bool of whether or not it was pressed. Same thing for a release, except now we check the release keys for that key. Check if the certain key was released. during the current frame. And then finally, is key held? This is an important one because this one tells us uh, whether or not a key is currently being held by checking held keys at that key. So check if a certain key is currently being held. And that's our input function, our class, sorry. So now we need to use it. So back in game.cpp, now at the top, we can include input.h. Okay. And then down here, underneath graphics, I can instantiate input. And now I can use it. So as I said, at the beginning of every frame, the very first thing we're going to do is begin new frame. That's going to reset our pressed keys and our released keys. First time around doesn't really matter because they're all set to false anyway. But it's good to it's good to reset it. Now, now I can check a different type of event, so a different event type. Uh, so after we pull, I can say if event.type equals SDL key down. So now SDL told us that a key was pressed. So now we need to check what key it is. Well, before we check what key it is, we have to set it in our input class. So I'm going to say if uh, event.key.repeat equals zero. Key.repeat. This makes sure that you're not holding down a key. Um, so if we're checking for one single key press, we don't want it if it was a repeat. So we have to check that for our key down event. So if that's not true, we're going to call our key down event 
and we're going to pass it event. So now we're going to check for key up. So SDL tells us the key was released. We set it. We call our key up event in our input class. Pass it event, and that's it. Everything else is handled. So now we can change this if statement for SDL quit. We're going to make it so that when we hit the escape button, the game quits. So we can delete that. And now we just say if Well, we still need to check the event type before we check the key press. I'm sorry. Before we check the key press, we still have to check it. Uh, so it's actually going to be pretty much the same. Uh, yeah. Just stick on the else if instead of the if. It doesn't really matter. Uh, but now down here, we can check to see if escape was pressed and quit. So that's just a simple if statement. If input now we can use one of our functions for checking key state was key pressed it wants a scan code so we'll give it SDL scan code escape if that's true return quit out of the game loop can't quit out of the function and the game will end the window will close and that'll be it. So that's it. So now, to check input, we can run it. So it's still looking nice. If I hit escape, it closes. So it works. Our input class works. So now, this is a long video. We're very quickly going to add um, frame rate. Uh, stuff. So this is all in the game class. Um, so let me just look at my notes. Limiting FPS and the rest of the game class. Okay. So we added input, now we're just going to limit the FPS. So Cave Story runs at 50 FPS. So we have to, we're going to create a couple constants. We're going to stick them in a namespace just to keep them out of the way of everything else in case we ever have an FPS variable or something somewhere else. We don't want it to be global. Const in FPS. Set it to 50. So our FPS is 50. Now max frame time. That's the maximum amount of time um, a frame is allowed to last. So that'll make more sense when I, in just a second. So just hold that thought about what that means. So right before the game loop starts, I'm going to put a comment here saying start the game loop so we know where that's starting. Right before that, though, we're going to create an int called last update time. Set it equal to SDL get tip. SDL get ticks gets the number of milliseconds, I believe, yep, since the SDL library was initialized. So since we called SDL init up here, gets the number of milliseconds. So that doesn't mean too much just yet the first time, but we have to start it outside the loop. So that's why I created it right here, right before the loop starts. We're going to set that, though, every frame. So now we can go down here, underneath all of our input, everything. So right before the loop's about to uh, hit the end and then go back to the top, we're going to say const int current time milliseconds equals SDL get ticks again. So now current time milliseconds will have still the number of milliseconds since SDL was initialized, but it's going to be however long this all took to happen. Since we set it here right before it started and then we're getting it again here, the difference of that is going to be however long this took. And that number is very important. Well, the difference is very important. So I'm going to store that here. So elapsed time milliseconds equals current time milliseconds minus last update time. 
So now elapsed time milliseconds is how long this current frame took. <clears throat> so then we can say last update time equals current time milliseconds to start it right here. And then the loop will go back around. This will all happen again. And then current time milliseconds minus this new last update time is going to be how long the next frame takes. And so that's just going to keep happening. The whole goal here, though, is to get elapsed time milliseconds. And that is because now everything's going to come full circle. Watch this. We're going to call our update function that we created. We didn't write anything in it yet, but we're just going to call it. We're going to take the standard min elapsed time milliseconds and max frame time. So what this does, let me explain this briefly. Max frame time, as I mentioned before when I created it, is the maximum amount of time that we're allowing for a frame. So this number right here is just uh, based on the fact that we want 50 milliseconds. Uh, I'm sorry, 50 frames per second. So, since there are a thousand milliseconds in a second, that's why we do this. Times 5 for 50. Wait. Alright, I'll get back to you on why I have this 5 here. It's important though. Anyway, uh, so we're going to take the min of elapsed time so if if the if this frame took less than our maximum time we're just going to use that and that's fine if it took more than that though if it took more than our maximum time we're going to just use our maximum time that way it's limited and it can't go higher than 50 frames per second so that's good if it goes higher than 50 frames per second weird stuff will start happening so we have to limit it then we're passing it into update as elapsed time because we're going to, all of our physics is going to be based on this number. We don't want, we want our physics to be based on how long the frame took so that, for example, if we have Quote, who is our main character, running to the right for five seconds, on a slower computer, if we don't factor in how long each frame is taking, he's not going to get to the same spot that someone on a faster computer would over the course of five seconds. If we pass in how long the frame took, then we can multiply that by our speed and scale, uh, scale the velocity of quotes movement by um, the correct amount so that no matter what speed your computer is, you'll always get the same distance. It might be choppy or look weird if you're on a slow computer, but you'll always make it the same distance. All physics will be equal, and that's extremely important. So this stuff could be a little bit confusing, uh, frame rate stuff. I even got confused on this max frame time calculation. But um, please ask me questions if you have any. I did a lot of research on uh, limiting frame time and passing it into update so that all movement, no matter your computer speed, is the same. So, please ask me questions. I'll be happy to answer them. But yeah, that's how you limit uh, your FPS. So, now, if I run this, it should be the same. It should all still be working. Even though we're limiting our FPS, it's still just fine. Hit escape, it closes. Great. And so that completes everything we needed to complete for this episode. So, next time, let's talk next time for a second. Here's what we'll be doing next time. Next time, we will be drawing Quote. Uh, whoops. For those who don't know, Quote is our main character. He is the little white robot guy in Cave Story. We're going to be drawing him to the screen. 
He won't really be moving around or anything just yet, but we're going to get him on the screen and then we'll worry about animating him and getting him to move around. So to do that, we're going to create our own sprite class and we're going to change up the graphics class a little bit uh, to allow us to store some certain things, uh, draw things, so good changes to graphics and the sprite class will be very important. So that's all I have for you for this episode. Uh, again, uh, my name is Limeoats. My website is Limeoats.com. My Twitter is at Limeoats. Please follow me on Twitter here um, so you get updates on when I'll be streaming. Not streaming, I'm sorry. Wow. Recording, uh, uploading my videos. You'll know when the next episode is going to come out. All that kind of stuff. I tweet about it a lot. So follow me there. Uh, GitHub, all the code that I just wrote will be up here. So go here to get it or to review it or whatever. Uh, yeah. Also, my subreddit, which I should all include in here. Also, all right, that should finally be the end of all of my links. Reddit, it's an important uh, place because all of my uploaded videos go there as soon as they are uploaded to YouTube so check that out as well subscribe there and of course subscribe to please subscribe to this YouTube channel uh, so you'll get all of the updates on that on each video I release so yeah thank you very much for watching and I will see you all next time